Our series for the month of November is called A Season of Thanksgiving. No surprise there. And Thanksgiving is, of course, a day. This year it is November 28th, almost as late as it can be. But Thanksgiving is also an attitude and an action. And so with this series in November, I want us to think about Thanksgiving, especially as an action. After all, it is giving thanks. And so today's scripture story, I feel like, shows what a person of faith does to give thanks. But to really see why he gives thanks and why we might, let's go to the beginning of the story. The story is going to begin in Jericho. And I also want to share with you that this is the last week of Jesus' life when this story happens, which I think makes it all the more amazing. This is about one week before the Last Supper. So as we get ready to hear this story of what happened with Zacchaeus and Jesus the last week before the Last Supper, let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you prepare our hearts to receive your word. Help us to know the reality of your grace so that we may thank you and joy. We pray in the name of Jesus, your son. Amen. From Luke chapter 19, beginning with the first verse. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and he climbed a sycamore tree to see him because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he's gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next morning, Zacchaeus sat up in bed with a jolt. What have I done? Was it a dream? Oh my God. Sometimes I wonder why God chooses certain folk to be Bible characters and not others. Because Zacchaeus was one of those tax collectors we read about last week, collecting taxes for the despised Roman Empire, and not only that, but a chief tax collector. It was like a pyramid scheme in those days. If you had a city enough to have a chief tax collector, then he would be in charge of other tax collectors. They would collect taxes, skim some off for them, and then skim some off for him. So we could call it a franchise, maybe, more charitably. And tax collecting um, was way different than it is now in that it was considered... um, You know, we love the United States, right? But they did not love the Roman Empire. So it's considered collecting taxes from the poor and giving them to the rich and giving them to the despised. And so not only was Zacchaeus a tax collector, but he was rich. And in Jesus' preaching and teaching, you know, all the times he said, it's hard for a rich person to go through the... Get to, uh, get to God's kingdom. It's hard for a rich person to really understand the gospel. It's hard for a rich person to follow and serve. 
And so that next morning, after Jesus had seen him in the tree and called him down and everyone had grumbled and said, you're going to eat with a sinner? I can picture Zacchaeus waking up in bed the next morning, sitting up with a jolt going, oh my God, what did I do? What did I say? What did I agree to do? Maybe it was a dream. Well, Zacchaeus had probably heard about Jesus for a long time now because as I mentioned before reading the scripture, this is the third year of Jesus' ministry. And he's pretty well known about around Judea and Samaria and Galilee where he's from. It was three years ago that he left home, that he stopped being a carpenter and went full time as a minister and got disciples to help him and got baptized in the Jordan River and started preaching and teaching and healing and sharing about God's grace. And a lot of people changed their perspective. They, they got a new life. They realized things they had never known from listening to him. And so yesterday, Zacchaeus, for some reason, gets the idea to go downtown to go to where Jesus is going to pass through, because I guess people come ahead saying, Jesus is coming here tomorrow. And he wanted to at least see him. Now, Jericho um, was a really cool city at that time. It was called the City of Palms. It had springs of clear water, and it was near Herod's summer palace. It was about 15 miles uh, north of Jerusalem to the northeast and that day, let's picture the, the crowd being huge, a huge crowd. You all have been to a parade at least once in your life. You know um, how it is to be behind several people if you don't get out early enough and put down your chair, and I don't know if they had those kinds of things there. And so the crowd's lining both sides of the street, and he can't see over their heads because this famous story that's been told for centuries says he was short and no one would let him in because who would let a tax collector in to go in the front of the line and look but nothing would deter him because the holy spirit had called him so i'm thinking he calculated okay jesus is going this fast in five minutes he'll be up there so he ran around like we might in a parade he found the tree he went up the tree, climbed the branches. There must have been a low one, right? So he could step up to the first one, climbed up the tree, branch by branch. All I need to do is see him. That'll be more than I deserve. So the voices get louder. He's coming closer. And then I picture Jesus pausing to say hello to a little child. Don't you? And his disciples are like, come on, come on what are you doing? Like they usually did. And he's on his way again and I can see his face and Zacchaeus can see his face and his face is looking up and Zacchaeus can't believe it. He's looking at him. How did he know he was up there? How does he know his name? Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I want to come to your house today. Now, climbing down the branches of a tree when people who don't like you are watching and your robe is getting in the way, maybe you have your belt girding it up and you're coming down the branches, so that's not a good time. And people are groaning and grumbling. Why are you going with him? Now, his disciples probably weren't surprised, right? They're kind of used to it. And I'm thinking that whenever they get to go to a sinner's house, it's a lot more fun than when they go to a good person's house. <laughs> Wouldn't you want to do that? I would. Once I was in a Bible study when I was a 30-something, and there was a study about Zacchaeus, and the question um, we started with was, what would you have to do to your house if Jesus was coming to eat there? And I was always... I was always one of the ones with the questions where I was like really honest. And so um, I was really sad to think of that because our kids were, you know, say, let's see, in the eight, uh, you know, up to seven or eight years old. And it was a really messy house. And there was toys all over the floor and there was uh, laundry on the dining room table. 
It was always sticky on the kitchen floor, you know? When you have little kids, sticky on the kitchen floor. Jesus would have walked in the sticky with his bare feet. And so I feel for Zacchaeus, especially remembering that when Jesus comes, he always brings these guys with him who used to be fishermen. And they've been away from home for like, who knows how long. And I'm not sure they got baths out often. And I wonder if they were all especially glad to eat at his house. And I'm thinking they were. Probably a great cellar full of wine, right? A cellar full of wine of all kinds. Good, delicious food from the market. And a good laugh about the tree. I'm so glad to get to know you, Jesus said. I'll remember this day always. That next morning, it took a few moments, but Zacchaeus realized it wasn't a dream. It wasn't a dream. It was Jesus who called his name. That was Jesus at his house, and that's Jesus who sat at his table, and that's Jesus who picked up the bread that his wife made that morning and held it up and gave thanks to God and broke it at his table, giving thanks to God. And when Zacchaeus woke up, I, I'm imagining his wife kind of looking at him like, you know, he's snoring, she's looking, you're waiting for the person to wake up. Is this the Zacchaeus that I married? You really did say it, his wife said. You're giving half our stuff to other people. And if you've done anything dishonest, you're making it right. What have I done, said Zacchaeus. And she patted him on the hand, or maybe she gave him a little kiss. How could you help it? We were all so thankful. We were all so grateful that he chose you and came to our house. There's another story about Zacchaeus. It's a legend. It's not in the Bible. It goes something like this. When he got older and uh, retired and... Um, but still loved to go out and do things, he would get up every morning and he would get a bucket and fill it with water from the spring. And he would carry it to an old sycamore tree. And he would carefully water the roots of the old tree. And one day, uh, a young boy followed him to see what the heck he was doing with that bucket every day and saw him watering the tree. He said, why are you watering this old tree? And he said, that's where I met Christ. This is where he called my name. I never feel so grateful and thankful as when I'm here. And that's why I water the tree. Gratitude is a feeling sometimes, but thanksgiving is gratitude in action, like watering the roots of the tree. And Zacchaeus, I know, felt different in those first few days after he responded to Jesus. His first thanksgiving was probably a prayer. Thank you that I went to see the parade. Thank you for the tree. Thank you that Jesus saw me. Thank you he knew my name. Thank you he came to my house. Thank you he broke the bread there. He gave thanks for being accepted. And after he prayed, he gave thanks by doing, by giving. I'm going to suggest that if we think of, as a person of faith, if you thank God for what's been given to you, and if you think of everything you do as a thanksgiving to God, let's say when you go to work, when you make food for your family, when you do your schoolwork, when you make your bed, when you clean your kitchen, wash the dishes in the sink, when you take care of your animals, what if that is all a thanksgiving? Why not? Why not a thanksgiving to God for what's given to you? Do you know how that would change, that thinking would change your life? And I believe that is how it is, that we have been accepted, we have an eternal home, 
Our name has been called. Christ has come to our house. Christ has come to this house. Everything from now on should be a thanksgiving. And it's as easy as that. I'll finish with this story. About four years ago, um, I woke up one morning saying, what have I done? Oh my goodness, did I really say that? Did I really do that? It wasn't many days before that that I got a call from a lady named Miss Christy Hall. I knew her because I work in the presbytery office for seven years now, and I knew her as the clerk because she'd been on a committee and because I knew her as the PNC, the Pastor Nominating Committee Chair here. And so she asked me to lunch. We sat down at a table, and she said to me, our pastor, Amy, is going on active duty for 11 months. Would you like to come and interview for being the pastor at Kirkwood for that 11 months? Well, I was between pastor calls. I'd finished one. I was guest preaching almost every Sunday somewhere in the presbytery. So I was available, and the next few days were a blur. I came over and sat in back when the preschool office was the session room. Does any of you remember that, that day? I think Tim was there. I, know, I think Sean was there. I was interviewed. Um, I was asked, and I said yes almost like immediately without even thinking about it, kind of like Zacchaeus. Chuck had already told me when I mentioned the possibility to follow what I thought God was doing and he would support it 100%. And then the next morning, panic set, set in. What have I done? It's not like me to make a change very quickly. In fact, it's completely the opposite of Sandra to make a change quickly. It's been four years now. November 16th is uh, my official anniversary date. At the end of her active duty leave, Pastor Amy continued on with active duty, and I was so blessed to be asked to continue on here to be the pastor of this church. Amen. So this is not, I'll make clear, this is not a job to me. It's nothing like a job. This is a, a thanksgiving. So I know that I've been accepted by God, that I have an eternal home, that God loves me, that God provides for me. And this is a response that I make. And as I do that, I feel such joy of being able to love you all. Um, how cool is it to get to share God's word? to um, watch you grow and to welcome you whenever I see you. So as um, we come to the table today, by the way, the word Eucharist means thanksgiving. And whenever I celebrate the Eucharist with you all, I feel more thanksgiving than any other time. And as we get ready to come here to the table, you might remember all the people in the Bible that sat with Jesus to eat on a grassy hillside or at a table in that upper room. Think about all those times and then think about how Christ is coming into this house today. Already he's here, probably waiting back there with the ushers and servers to eat with us and knows us all by name. 